All right, it's a twofer. So this one, I'm gonna talk about hammer time. Got my still, my Alec Bradley Occidental, whatever that is. Still working on the bullet. Um, hammer time. So I'm sure all of you, even the farthest flung uh, back in the back in the states where you, you don't maybe travel a lot or, or that sort of thing here sort of things. I'm sure a lot of you have heard about Japanese culture. The nail that stands up gets hammered down, right? Which means the thing that's different gets squashed into conformity. And, pardon me. I would agree with that. I used to agree with it totally, but now I've, I've qualified that. So, uh, the nail that sticks up a little gets hammered a lot. And the nail that sticks up a lot might get ignored. We might believe, like, I, I, I didn't see that nail. What nail? These nails are okay. Did, did, did you check out these nails? Don't, don't look over there. You don't want to see that nail. Uh, this is my experience, right? And, and I've seen it in a, in a lot of different ways, right? Um, so, for example, um, I worked at a, at a high school while I was here for a few years and it was a very interesting experience. It was an all Buddhist high school, a Buddhist high school, all girls, sorry, all girls and all Buddhists. And many of the teachers were, and all of the administration actually were Buddhist monks. And Buddhist monk, you know, if you don't live here, Buddhist monk here isn't what you're, whatever you're thinking right now, all that image of a Buddhist monk, just, yeah, put, put that away. Uh, it's not Kwai Chang Kane, it's not, you know, it's not Dalai Lama, it's not, it's not any of that. It's basically a guy wearing a suit and some Buddhist symbol as well, right? I mean, it, it's kind of, actually, these men have described it themselves to me as their part-time business. Uh, you know, you might have a neighborhood Jinja, that, Jinja uh, shrine that you run or temple and and uh, you, sorry, Buddhism is temple. Shrine would be Shinto, pardon me. And uh, you know, you've got a, a neighborhood temple and you, you go around once or twice a year collecting money from, from folks, uh, more, more money from the folks who are closer to death as is understandably the case, pardon me. And uh, so anyway, these guys were, you know, were running the school basically. Um, and I was teaching there, right? I was teaching English. It was three years. It was a really interesting experience, a uh, very thick slice of life. You know, I, I got to experience Japanese culture from a few different perspectives. That was an interesting one there. And uh, so um, in the morning, this was funny, in the morning they had strict dress code, right? You had to be, you know, all buttoned up, zero makeup. Uh, your, their hair had to be black, couldn't have any color in the hair. Um, oh, the skirts, right? The skirts are naturally like down to the top of the knee and they had to stay there. Weren't allowed to like jack them up at all, stuff like that, etc. right? And in the morning, there was this intense line of, of teachers at the entrance to the school. And most of them are women, but not all, but most of them. And you'll understand why in a moment. And they would be like, boop, 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 you know, laser beaming as these girls were, were walking. It was a high school, so they were uh, here, what, that was th three years of high school. So they're like, I don't know, what is it? 15, 16, 17, something like that. Pardon me. And these girls are walking and they're like, boop, 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 boop. And what they would look for it, were the nails that were sticking up a little bit, right? So like, look for the small changes. Oh, you know, that button isn't undone. Or hey, is that a little bit of makeup on you? Come over here, hey, what? Is that a little bit of color in your hair? Meanwhile, the nails that were sticking all the way up, you know, shirt unbuttoned down to a belly button, you know, all kinds of, you know, strong makeup, you know, maybe the hair was super colored. Nobody actually really wanted to deal with that. Right, that nail was sticking up way too much, and would 
and the system here, as I'll explain, the system here isn't isn't designed for taking down the tall nails, right? It's really good at, at, at hammering the small nails. Um, so, hey, sit down. So in, uh, so in that case, they would rather avoid and ignore the tall nails, which is a, a very often the case, and just go for those small nails and smash them. Because the small nails, they're basically rule followers who went out of the norm just a little bit, right? They're expecting, probably, to be squashed, right? And they're gonna take that obediently, right? Uh, another case, right, on the road, right? I'm a, I'm a big driver here, I've got a motorcycle, I've got a car, I drive a lot. And uh, with the police here, when they go for speeders, it's not as it's it's not as much a situation in the states where it's like a predator and prey, right? Like a cruiser, at the police, you know, just looking looking to catch people one on one. Here, it's more of an organized event, almost like a festival, you know, where uh, you know they'll set up these speed trap factories where it's a very convenient location where maybe you know on a highway you come over a rise or around a corner and then there they are to catch you and then they're set up with like vans and like tables set out where you can multiple people can sign your checks you know they, they process you right hey puppy <laughs> they process hey how's it going i know i'm ignoring you i'm ignoring you but i can't throw because you, your feet Right, you'll get all torn up on the road. It has to be on the grass, so we gotta wait, all right? A little bit later. <laughs> all right, get down, puppy. All righty, so at these speed traps, invariably, when I'm looking at these folks who are all pulled over, right, there are people who are probably barely exceeding the speed limit, and probably they're all dressed nicely, they've got nice cars. Um, what you never see you know, and when you're on the road, you'll see. These groups called like, uh, you know, Bozozoku riders, right? They've got these really annoying motorcycles or scooters that are open headers or, or very loud exhaust. Like, right, and you know, they'll be doing it all hours of the night. Uh, sometimes they'll even be harassing the cops. They'll be you know, harassing drivers, um, you know, some of the cars, you know, very ornate cars that are also causing a lot of trouble. They are nails that are sticking way far out. And what I can tell you in my 25 years or so here, I have never seen one of those tall nails in these speed trap factories, never, right? Nor have I ever seen one pulled over for any reason anywhere, never. I always see a lot of good customers sitting in those seats. If their nail is sticking out a little bit, they're expecting to get crushed. They're expecting to pay their fine, right? Peacefully, right? Expect that, uh, you know, respect the authority. That's what I see, right? And, pardon me. And, um, so there's this mentality difference, right? Of, of law enforcement or rule enforcement in the states and here. And so uh, people here, I think accurately, think that you know a lot of people in the states, uh, they wanna be like a hero, right? They wanna be famous, they wanna be a hero, right? We want positive attention, right? Hence, I'm doing this, right? Yeah, positive attention. And um, so police in the states, My, my experience, right? So I, I've been pulled over lots of times here and in the States, right? I've been pulled over lots of times. And in the States, a lot of times, if I'm not going that fast, you know, if I'm respectful, you know, my hands are at 10 and two, yes, sir, no, sir, yes, sir, here, yeah, here it is, sir, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for my glove box, is that okay, here I go, sir, right? They might let you off with a warning, right? Uh, especially if it was just a little over, however, if you take off or you're, you know, evading being pulled over or if you're, you know, do something way over the top, they're living for that. They're like, yes, yeah, honey, I'm going to be homely. I've got a mission, you know, wham. And uh, here it would be a totally different thing, right? 
you know, if you've got a really tall nail that's out of your league, you might just, you know, just like the girls, ignore it, right? Let it go. Uh, because the attention that you would draw to yourself trying to hammer down that nail that's way too long, your system really isn't made to handle that. Um, you know, it, it's going to be a loss of face when you fail or look like you're failing or it's just a bad situation. They'd rather ignore it, let it go, right? So the cops actually, like if someone really, um, you know, runs for it or, or maybe you've seen videos of like these bozuku beating on cops' cars with, with bamboo swords and doing stuff and they're not going to, they don't crush them at all, right? I mean, which, you know, that's another video. But, yeah, the ignoring thing, right? In the dojo was the same thing. So some of you know that I originally came to Japan. One of my original missions was to study sword, samurai sword. And I studied uh, for, what, eight years in Osaka. And, you know, in the dojo, a lot of little nails getting crushed. You know, your, your form's a little bit off, or your technique, your, uh, your attitude, you know, a little bit off, bam, crushed. And there were just a couple really tall, freaky nails in the dojo that probably in the beginning, they got a little bit of feedback, but by the end, you know, by the time I, you know, I was there, and these, you know, people would stay, it wouldn't even give them any feedback. You know, everybody, you'd be watching everybody do their, their waza, their forms, like everybody the same, the same, and you'd see this one long, tall nail just doing his or her own thing, like, wow, is this person even in the same building as us, you know, just doing it, and, you know, sensei would be like, hey, you, short nails over there, pick your sword up a little bit, hey, you, a little shorter steps, you know, just not even looking at that long one, you know. So, it's a fascinating thing. That's my experience. I, I, I really like to hear any of your experience. So, if, if you live in Japan, if you live in Japan, and uh, you've had any of this short nail, tall nail stuff, I, I'd love to hear your experience. Please put it down below. And if you live in the states, you know, if you agree with my assessment, I mean, I think is it still true? I mean, when I was there, Americans basically lived to be a hero. And, and probably, you know, I don't know, it's a sensitive topic now, police and everything, but I would guess that, you know, the average policeman, he's a little more turned on by the idea of a hundred mile an hour chase rather than a, I was doing 38 in a 30 mile an hour zone. I, I could be wrong. Put it down below. Let me know. Till next time.